Hello everyone, in this video we're talking about turbochargers, superchargers, the difference between them, how to implement them into Stormworks, how to use them in your creations, and the numbers and performance upgrades or increase that they give. So follow along and let's get started. This is a popular question that I get for my creations, especially my vehicles that have the superchargers. I get questions on how they work, the difference of turbochargers and superchargers because I've sometimes mentioned that this game does not allow turbochargers and that is true so we're going to go look into the difference but right now in front of us I've created tests for the different types of pumps that the game allows and this first sequence here with the blue on the little uh, stand here are I4 engines or inline 4 so they have four cylinders whereas the, the green ones are V8s. So we test the difference of inline four or four cylinder engines versus eight cylinder engines and how the uh, different superchargers impact these different types of engines. So before we get started with the actual test, we'll dive into some of the information of turbochargers and superchargers. I'm sure there's tons of videos on the difference between turbochargers and superchargers that you can find on YouTube or information on the internet, but we're going to just do a basic, very dumbed down explanation of the difference. So turbochargers on the left, they're powered by exhaust gas, meaning you have the exhaust routed into the turbocharger unit, which spins the compressor and you have intake air coming in it gets compressed and put into the engine. So it's a high capacity system. It increases your output. Now on the right hand side, we have a supercharger, which is powered by the engine. So there's a pulley that's attached to your shaft, your main uh, crankshaft, and it spins the pulley, it spins the compressor. And this diagram doesn't show, but it pretty much you'll have an air intake and uh, compressed air comes out of it. So that's the difference between the two of them. My personal experience with supercharged engines it was in my uh, supercharged Tahoe, which is shown here. That's an actual photo of my car. It had a Pro Charger supercharger mounted on the V8 engine. It was so fast. It was so good. Um, it was able to be faster than Subaru um, STI, WRXs, and some BMWs. And not quite faster, but kept up with a Dodge Viper in, a circum in circumstances. So very fun to drive. I don't have this car anymore. I sold it, but it was so enjoyable. My other experience is with my turbocharged Saab. Also, I sold this vehicle, but it was a four-cylinder turbocharged engine. The difference is you'd get a little lag compared to the supercharger, and it was a four-cylinder, so better on gas and all that stuff, but um, still very fun. A little bit of lag, but it has power. And currently, I have a turbocharged Cadillac ATS, uh, but same system, just like this Saab. How a turbocharger works is there's two, this is a very dumbed down version by the way, so th don't expect that you'll get detail. This is just a very, very dumbed down version. You can find tons of articles on how turbocharger works, but pretty much you input air into the turbocharger. So that's the blue. So the air intake sucks in the air and the turbocharger spins and compressed air goes into the engine. Now what spins the turbocharger? is the engine exhaust. So the exhaust is routed into the turbocharger. It spins the spindle inside the turbocharger, compressing the air, and the exhaust then leaves the system and goes into the exhaust and out of the exhaust pipe. So again, it's very dumbed down. There's lots more than this, but this is just the basics. So you have the air in, air out, exhaust in, exhaust out. The way a supercharger works, is you have your air intake. Your air comes in, that's the blue line, so air in through the supercharger, it gets compressed and it goes out into the engine. Now here, what compresses the air this into the supercharger is actually RPS. In this case, the crankshaft is actually attached with a pulley to the supercharger. It spins it and compresses that air. So that's why there's no lag. With a turbocharger, there's a bit of delay for that exhaust to get routed into the turbocharger. With a supercharger, it's the actual crankshaft of the engine spinning 
the supercharger and giving you instant power. So what I found was that in the case of Stormworks, the Pro Charger supercharger shown here on the left is pretty much what an impeller pump is in the game. You have your air in, air out, and you have the RPS that spins it. It even looks very similar. Um, in this case, you're using mechanical um, RPS from the engine. Obviously, the game, it's not attached to your uh, belt. Like in your modular engine, it's not attached to your belt drive. Though I guess that could be an addition. The game would make the supercharger attached to the belt drive itself. But in the game, in this case, we don't have that yet. But what we have is a system that uses the RPS coming in to the orange um, node there. And I believe with the orange node anyways, it comes into one of the nodes, the RPS, that spins it and outputs it through the air um, and, and compresses that air. So this, the Pro Charger Supercharger is very similar to the impeller pump. It uses RPS and compresses your air through, from your air intake. Now, what I found was that the electric pump systems that just have an on and off switch and pretty much they'll just compress because you turn it on and tell it to compress, it runs off an electric system. And that's very similar to this uh, electric supercharger that's shown here on the left. So it doesn't use the engine RPS, it doesn't use the belt drive, but rather it just uses the engine as a power source, as an electric so power source to physically um, pump air through. So that's very similar to this electric pump in Stormworks. So we return to the fact that the game does not have a turbocharger because there's no system that allows us to route exhaust in and exhaust out to increase our output. So in theory, if the game was to add a turbocharger, it would pretty much be an impeller pump with a single added connection for the exhaust out and the RPS input would be converted to an exhaust in. So you'd exhaust in and you'd add a node exhaust out and you'd have the air in, air out as we currently do. So this would be how they could add a turbocharger. Currently the game does not have this. So we're stuck with using superchargers to increase our engine power. We return to our demonstration here. So we have, the way it's lined up is the blue are the I4 and the green are the V8s. This little pedestal here shows what is what is the added thing to that engine. So in this case, there's nothing on top of it. So this is a naturally aspirated engine, meaning there's no supercharger. Here we have the impeller pump, the small impeller pump. And you can see it right down there. Now here we have the big impeller pump right here. We have the fluid pump and the large fluid pump. So these are all the I4 or inline four engines that we have with the various added intakes, or not intake superchargers. On the left side, we have the um, v V8s with the green. So here naturally aspirated, small impeller, large impeller, small fluid pump, large fluid pump. So we'll get started and start off with turning on these uh, the small or the V8, the V, the I, I4 engines. Oh my goodness, the I4 engines. They're all using the exact same ECU. It's NJ's modular NJ or modular uh, ECU. But what I did do is it's uh, my version. So it's uh, modified by me. That's why it says V7. So currently, this is not what you can get from the shop. I've modified it, added some things. But, anyways, let's turn that on and. start them up so now they're started to, they've started to operate so you can see right away here the reason we have the torque meter is just to kind of see the torque and currently the torques are actually reading quite similar and even the rps is but what we did to determine what some um, i guess this one has some torque difference what i did to determine the Okay, returning to the demonstration here, we uh, do have the I-4 or four cylinder engines here with the blue pedestal. And we have V8 engines over there with the green pedestal. 
and the way it's lined up is this one's naturally aspirated or there's no supercharger. Here we have the small impeller pump, large impeller pump, fluid pump, and large fluid pump. So that's all for the i4. And then we have the exact same thing for the V8 engine. And the way it's attached is, so this one has nothing. There's the uh, small pump and it just kind of goes into that RPS. And the electric pumps are just attached to the air intake supply and feed directly into the air manifold. Now all of them use NJ modular engine ECU, but it's my version, I've modified it. So they all are my own um, sort of update on his great creation. So we'll go, go ahead and get started with the four cylinder engines. So that was just the starter. And now they're all going. So we'll let, leave them a little bit to process, but pretty much what the way we're doing it is we have a medium generator for all of them. And the output that this generator is giving us is going to determine our engine strength because obviously a more powerful engine will give us more output on our medium generator. Also, there's a torque meter. All of them are giving different um, or more or less different RPS. So if we go through them, the reason why is because the different systems are actually straining these engines differently. So even though they all have a medium generator, the fact that this one has an impeller pump, it's actually eating some of the RPS that this engine's producing. Therefore, possibly, if the engine's too weak, it'll be producing less power than a naturally aspirated one if it's having a hard time keeping up with the fact that it's trying to power this uh, medium generator and power the impeller pump. So we'll figure that out in a second here. So that that's why the torque will vary, but all of them are fully 100% throttle. So what we know is as our base, the standard naturally aspirated, no supercharger engine is giving us around 8.7. With our small impeller pump, it's actually 7.9. So keep in mind that the four cylinder engine actually can't keep up with what, what it's trying to power. So it's not powerful enough in this case to power the medium generator and that impeller pump. Hence, it's actually giving us, or str it's struggling to power it. So it's actually giving us less power than a naturally aspirated in this case. So that's the small impeller pump. Now the large impeller pump, it just does not work. The reason why is that drains too much of the RPS from the small engine. So we can't even use the large impeller pump. Now, this is my favorite thing to use on all of my engines, the standard fluid pump. And in this case, we're getting 10.8. So if you go back to our naturally aspirated, it's giving us around two units more power with just this fluid pump. And I'm happy with that. That gives us a little power boost. It's just like in real life. I mean, a supercharger doesn't double your capacity, but it gives you a little boost. So that's what this is. This one's off, sorry. This one's saying false, I was concerned for a second, but obviously the one down there is very much on. So that's just, this is just the, on the pedestal. But pretty much, that's this is my optimal thing for four-cylinder engines. Now the large fluid pump, it's struggling. So it may be putting too much air into the system is one of the ideas, but regardless, if you look at this, it's draining power, meaning the generator is not producing. Our RPS is so low, the engine's stalling out, and it's using that electric motor to try to boost itself. So large fluid pump does not work for me in a four-cylinder engine, and I, I only use the fluid pump for a four-cylinder engine. Now let's stop this, and let's start up the eight-cylinder engines and see what these results give us. Now I do have to power it a little more, like the reason I'm pressing this, just to get them started, because it's not quite like in a car. But regardless, because the medium generator does actually put more strain on our system than a car does. Because it's car, a car you start it and it's just sitting idle. Anyways, our naturally aspirated in this case is 36.7. So keep in mind, just 
a V8 alone in this case from the naturally aspirated four cylinder. Oh, it's gone, but I guess it was like reading eight point something. So here we're at 36, so much more power. And this one's naturally aspirated. So our baseline, there we have like 37. So naturally aspirated V8 is 37 units of power with a small impeller, 42, 40, oh, it's, it's, it is slowly rising actually. So we're actually increasing, it's creeping up. Whereas this one is staying more stable at 37 or steadily increasing. So the small impeller pump with an eight cylinder engine is more powerful than uh, naturally aspirated. So unlike the four cylinders, the impeller pump with a V8 engine is, wow, there we go, we're almost doubling the capacity here. It's going up and up. Perfect, so we're like at 6.3 now, whereas that is steady at 37. Okay, that's a small impeller. Now the large impeller pump, zero. So this again doesn't even work with a meat with a V8 engine. Maybe it would work if you had larger cylinders like a boat engine or something, but for car engines you can't use this large one. Now the fluid pump is giving us 4.4.8, 44.8, sorry, 44.8 versus naturally so around 10 units more, which is still nice. So actually I still do use the fluid pump for my vehicles it's steady i prefer that it kind of starts off steady what this one is still doing is now kind of stuck at the 69 70 ish region but this one gives you instant power which i do like because i was talking about the example earlier like my uh, supercharged tahoe you get instant power whereas here this one actually acts more like the turbocharger in a sense that you have to get your engine rps up high enough for it to be doing maximum power but this is a pretty impressive i mean we're we're past almost past double and then the last one is the uh large pump so it's struggling even with this one it's struggling maybe it's too efficient maybe too powerful but whichever the reason it's not like too efficient maybe it's too much air going into that system and it can't handle it so you can't use this one in these cases this one's pretty good, steady at 45, but this one's doing excellent. Like, it just keeps going up and up, so I'd be interested to see the temperature, to be honest, of these guys. Like, does the temperature, would it want to start to, um, I don't, anyway, like, if it's running too, too powerful, too much fuel, interesting. Anyway, that, what I have, what I know from this little test is that this one is the most powerful for a we may have run out of gas to be honest obviously the more uh, supercharged then the more powerful your engines are the faster they will run out of gas so keep in mind when you supercharge it in this game they will drain more gas and that's just like in real life so this one's out of gas whereas these ones are still chugging along if I could see it's little fuel tank back here so we're almost out this one's fully out but regardless that was the demonstration and let's take a look at the results on this screen i've gathered all the data that we just collected so as you could see for an inline four engine our naturally aspirated case is 8.6 units our small impeller pump is less it's 7.7 .7, where our small pump is 10.7 so the best one to use for an inline four is your small pump that will get you the most power out of that little engine. Now for a V8, it's a different circumstance. What you have is the naturally aspirated case is 37. Your small electric pump gets us 44.3. So I think even higher in that demonstration, it may have been 10 more, 47 or so. So it's getting us around 10 more units of power than the naturally aspirated case. But the small impeller almost doubles what the naturally aspirated engine does so in the v8 case the small impeller would be the best but one thing that would be of concern to me is the fact that it takes kind of time to charge up so you don't have your instant power but rather over time so if you slow down like if you stop go stop go you're not driving at a consistent speed 
you may not get that power. That power may be best if you're going in a straight line at high speeds, so keep that in mind. I hope you all have enjoyed the demonstration, the tutorial, and the explanation, the data, all that good stuff. Hopefully you can use it in your creations and it serves a greater purpose. So thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more.